G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're back with our series Reef Restoration. We're looking at a tank that started off in a bit of a bad shape and we're going through the processes and the steps that we take to fix this tank up. So today we're gonna to do a bit of an update, we're gonna look at the refugium and how the new refugium light's going and we're just gonna have a bit of a, a look at this tank to see how everything is traveling. When we first started working on this tank, there was a real problem with dinoflagellates. There was lots of brown slimy dinoflagellates growing off the rock, as well as a heap of other algae. Now, whilst we haven't completely fixed the algae problem, there's, it's significantly better than we, when we first started. So uh, the polyp extension of the corals is better. We've added more corals. Uh, we've added one or two fish, but basically everything up here is looking significantly better. Let's have a look under the tank at what we've done underneath in the sump. We haven't been to this tank in a couple of weeks and so it's quite interesting to see how it's all going in here. I've just uh, manually turned on the prime light so that we've got light down here. Usually the prime light doesn't come on until night time uh, because we're running an anti-sync photo period with the tank. And so it allows me to see really well how well this keto is growing. And you can see on top, it's actually quite white. So it's dying a little bit at the top and I'm gonna say that's because it's so bright right at the surface. But if you look underneath, it's this excellent deep green. So it's growing really, really well. And it's really occupying the entire space of this refugium which is great because we want to maximize the nutrient uptake by the keto. So this is doing excellent. This is exactly how I want it to look. But what I'm going to do today is actually harvest some of this keto. So I'm gonna take the top layer, that probably the first uh, two inches of the keto, and I'm gonna try and pull the majority of the white stuff out. I'm also gonna tackle this reactor. Now, I haven't done anything with this reactor. It's just sat here exactly like this the whole time that I've been looking after this tank. Um, I didn't think it was working until today. It's actually spewed up like this and the carbon's coming out of it. I think uh, it must be powered, so I'm gonna have a look at that. I'm also gonna look at the, uh, the protein skimmer. It's not really sitting quite straight. It needs a clean out. I don't know if it's bubbling so well, so I'll need to service that. At some point, I'm going to have to look at the filter sock on this system. Uh, it's another thing that I've really sort of avoided doing anything with. It seems adequate. It's not uh, blocked up too well. It is blocked up. Uh, but certainly, it's something I'm going to have to do something with it in the future. So we'll do a bit of a service, and then we'll go back up and look at the tank again. So I'm going to start with this keto. I've got a bucket here ready for it. It's difficult to do this without creating a bit of a mess. Got this cord here. But I really want to try and keep that healthy deep green. And I'm just pulling out the stuff on the top. So this will allow a bit more space and it'll stop the dead keto from decaying and releasing organics back into the system. I'm going to take out about half a bucket worth, I reckon. Okay, that'll do. Something else which I'm going to have to sort out in the future is going to be a better sponge for this baffle. Uh, I really just threw in what I had, which is just a, a thin bit of filter padding. Uh, not really very adequate, so you can see there's lots of things that we still have to do to the sump to get it really working perfectly. Um, but what we have done so far with the refugium light is really showing in the health of the corals up the top. So now I'm going to do something with this reactor. So I'm going to take this reactor out and like I said, I didn't think it was even working 
Uh, it's a powered reactor, so it has a pump underneath pushing the water through the media, which is a carbon. And um, the fact that it is working and the carbon has been in here for such a long time and it's spewing out really means I have to do something with it today. So I'll start by finding its uh, power point. I'm guessing it's this one. All right, I'll turn that off. Yeah, and that was it. So immediately I saw a change in the water in the top here. So it's draining down, so I've hit the right one. Um, what I'll do is I'll take this out I'll empty it, give it a clean, and then we'll look at what type of media uh, we might use in the future. I'm hoping that we don't really need any sort of uh, media in this reactor because this keto should be doing the job. Ugh. Now this is potentially gonna be a massive mess. That's its pump. So, very simple, the pump just goes in that hole at the bottom and just pushes the water through the media. But I'll give this a clean and we may or may not use it again. So I'm really keen to get this sump looking nice and clean. So I'm going to siphon some of the detritus, the bacterial silt, out of the bottom of the sump. So to do that, I'm going to start a siphon. Now, when you start a siphon from a sump, because it's low and you don't have a good head height, you've got to be very confident with the way that you start the siphon. I put it low in the bucket and like so. Now, it's a bit hard to see in here because it's still quite dirty, but this bacterial silt down here, and there we go, it's really thick. Now that we've finally got that reactor out of the sump, really allows us to have a bit more working space and just tidy everything up down here. I think we're also going to need a better uh, shelf for this skimmer. This skimmer has never sat straight as long as I've been here. Okay. We typically customize or make custom acrylic stands for skimmers, and that's what it's on at the moment, but it's just too small, oh, that might be better. Having this reactor out has probably made all the difference with the sump, to be honest. Now that I've got some water, I'm going to use it to clean the protein skimmer. We've put an automatic top-up system on this tank. It's a little uh, smart ATO and it feeds water across from the RO reservoir but because I've taken the water out more quickly than it can keep up with it, it's been beeping at me. Right. Anyway, so back to the skimmer. So it's maybe a little bit low. I haven't cleaned this out for two weeks, so I generally prefer a little bit more waste than this. But it looks like the body of the skimmer is due for a clean as well. If the body of the skimmer gets too dirty, it does reduce the amount of waste that the skimmer will pull out. So I don't clean them often, but I do try and keep them somewhat clean. And I'm probably just going to use a toothbrush for this. All right. So that's the cup done. All right. Not perfect, but it's certainly adequate to maximise the efficiency of the skimmer. So now a toothbrush for the body of the skimmer. And I'm just gonna loosen it, then put the cap back on, and hopefully it will trap all this. Every now and then, it's a good idea to give your protein skimmer a proper vinegar bath and a really good clean out. I normally do that when I'm cleaning out the pump and uh, cleaning the impeller and such. But for now, I'm just gonna 
lightly go over it. Okay, that's probably it. Put the cap back on. So it seems now that I've got that reactor out, I am able to get that protein skimmer sitting nicely. So that makes me happy. And now I'm just gonna clean the algae off the sump. There's still heaps of bacterial silt that you can see under here. Oh, there's another heat I didn't even know about. So we'll definitely clean this out in future episodes. Today, this is really just a very quick update and just a quick sump service. So the sump is looking so much better. There's still a lot of work to do. The next time we do a big water change, I'm gonna really go nuts and soften out all the debris off the bottom. And then it'll be exactly where I want it to be. But the most important thing is the keto and the refugium is really going well. The keto is absolutely cranking. So uh, that's it for the sump. Um, I'll turn it off, go back to schedule. And now we'll have a look at one more thing we're gonna do up in the top tank. So as I've already said, the algae is heaps better than it used to be. Definitely no dino anymore, which is the most frustrating algae to get rid of. But there is this hair algae, and so I'm going to siphon it out with my siphon hose. And with everything that we've done, you'll probably find that this algae will or would go away by itself. But we really want the tank to be problem algae free as quickly as possible. So each time I'm here, I'm just going to pluck a bit of this algae out. And that way we'll have our tank transformed in the shortest period of time. It's only been a few months since we first started working on this tank. And in that period of time, there has been already a transformation whereby the corals are happy. They're showing good polyp extension. The coralline algae is growing well. The problem algae is growing less. So everything is headed in the right direction for this tank. So we'll show you more episodes of reef restoration in the future. We'll show you uh, the tank as we further the transformation and we'll show you the before and after once we get this tank to the point that it is a thriving reef tank. So that's our video for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this update of reef restoration. And as I said, we'll bring you more episodes of reef restoration and other tanks in the future on Gallery Aquatica TV. So I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.